Diaper Dan was a man that lived on Sunless Beach and made a living as a dancer at a local strip club. Dan was known for his energetic and captivating performances that left the audience in awe. But one day, everything changed for Dan. As he was performing on stage, he saw a strange object in the sky. At first he thought it was a UFO, but as it got closer, he realized it was a dildo-shaped spaceship. Before he knew it, he was abducted by the aliens and taken to their ship. The aliens performed various experiments on Dan, including the removal of one of his kidneys. They did this to see if they could reproduce the kidney and use it to help other beings that had failed organs. However, the aliens weren't the only ones interested in Dan's kidney. The Dude Jr., a shady individual who made a living by selling organs on the black market, had caught wind of the aliens' experiments. He offered to buy Dan's kidney, but the aliens refused. Furious, the Dude Jr. broke into the alien ship and forcibly removed Dan's kidney, leaving him unconscious and barely alive. When Dan woke up, he realized he had been changed. He was now incontinent and had to wear a diaper for the rest of his life. The constant pain and frustration of his condition took a toll on him, and he started smoking weed to cope. As if things couldn't get any worse, Dan discovered that the aliens had cloned him. There were multiple versions of Dan on Sunless Beach. Country Dan, Boogie Board Dan, Canna Claus. Each of the Dans had their own unique personality and interests but they all shared a love for smoking weed. Despite all that had happened to him, Diaper Dan remained resolute. He continued to dance at the strip club, using his performances as a way to escape from the pain of his condition and to show the world that he was still the same person he always was, even if he was now in a diaper. The Dude Jr. continued to sell organs on the black market, but Dan never forgave him for what he had done. He always kept an eye out for the Dude Jr knowing that if he ever crossed paths with him again, he would make him pay for what he had done. As for the other Dans, they continued to live their lives, each one making the most of their unique situation. And while they may have been cloned, they were all still individuals with their own stories, experiences, and perspectives. But they all shared one thing in common, a love for smoking weed, a coping mechanism for the strange and painful lives they now live. Country Dan was an extraordinary individual, born as a fully grown man, the result of advanced alien cloning technology that had used the DNA of a man known as Diaper Dan. When he first arrived on Earth, he was lost and confused, but he quickly adapted to his new life and discovered his love for weed. Dan's love for weed and music quickly made him a well-known figure in the local community, but despite his popularity, he struggled with loneliness and a deep-seated sense of longing. He lived on the streets, sleeping in his tent on Dildo Corn Ave, and would often scour the trash cans at Sunless Beach, searching for discarded joints or partially smoked blunts that he could smoke. Despite the lack of resources, Dan always found a way to get his fix, sometimes trading his odd jobs for a hit of weed or rolling his own joints from scraps he found in the garbage. One day, as he was smoking a joint on Sunless Beach, he heard a beautiful voice singing in the distance. He followed the sound and came upon Dolly Carton, a country singer who lived in the nearby trailer park. Dan was struck by Dolly's kindness and warmth and they quickly became friends. Dolly took pity on Dan and offered him a place to stay in her trailer. From that moment on, Dan and Dolly were inseparable. They performed music together and traveled from place to place, spreading joy and hope wherever they went. Dan's love for life and his determination to make the world a better place never faded. With Dolly by his side, he finally found the love and support he had been searching for, and they lived happily ever after. They became an inspiration to many, and their music was loved by people of all ages and backgrounds. Despite the challenges they faced, they never lost their passion for life or their love for one another. Their love for weed only brought them closer together and they wrote many songs about their love for the plant. Their music was filled with positive energy and inspired others to find joy in their own lives. They became known as the dynamic duo of the trailer park and their love for weed only added to their unique and charismatic personalities. As they took to the stage, the audience erupted in applause. Dan and Dolly sang their hearts out delivering a powerful performance that touched the hearts of everyone in the room. Their music was filled with passion, and their love for each other was evident in every note. 
The audience was so entranced by their performance that they started to throw joints and blunts on stage as they sang, a testament to the love and support they had for Dan and Dolly. After the show, the audience was left in awe. People flocked to Dan and Dolly, eager to share their stories and to thank them for the hope they had given them. Dan and Dolly were humbled by the outpouring of love and support, and they realized that their journey had truly been worth it. Boogie Board Dan was born also a clone. The aliens who created him took DNA from Diaper Dan and used it to create him. Like Diaper Dan, Boogie Board Dan had a great love for weed. He was born on a spaceship and had a rare inner ear condition that made it difficult for him to balance. Despite his condition, he was determined to learn how to surf. Dan lived on Sunless Beach and would spend his days and nights on the beach looking at the waves. He would often smoke blunts while he walked the beach, trying to build up the courage to try surfing. Unfortunately, he would often throw the smoked blunts in the sand, not realizing the impact it would have on the wildlife. One day, Dan found a sick seagull floating in the ocean. He knew he had to act fast to save the bird, so he jumped on his boogie board and paddled out to the bird as quickly as he could. Despite the rough ocean conditions, Dan was able to reach the bird and bring it back to shore. When he got the bird back to the beach, he realized that the bird had eaten what looked like one of the blunts he had thrown in the sand. The bird was high and unable to fly, so Dan carefully picked up the bird and placed it on his shoulder. Dan took care of the bird, nursing it back to health and giving it a safe place to recover. He named the bird High Flyer, and the two quickly formed a bond. High Flyer would often sit on Dan's shoulder, and they would spend hours together, walking the beach and watching the waves. Dan was amazed at how fast the bird recovered, and he realized that he had a newfound sense of courage and determination. He was no longer afraid to try and surf, and he was finally ready to face his fears and learn how to surf. As he paddled out on his board towards the waves, he was filled with a mixture of fear and excitement. The waves started to pick up. Dan positioned himself on his board and started to paddle with all his might. Suddenly, a huge wave approached, and Dan used all his strength to stand up on his board. At first, he was wobbly, but as he started to balance himself, he suddenly found himself gliding effortlessly on the wave. High Flyer, his pet seagull, perched on his shoulder. The rush of wind in his hair, the salt in his face, and the feeling of being one with the ocean was an indescribable experience for Dan. He had never felt so alive, and as he rode the wave, he shouted with joy. High Flyer still perched on his shoulder, keeping a watchful eye, adding to the magic of the moment. As the wave started to dissipate, Dan gracefully jumped off his board and paddled back to the shore. To Dan's surprise, the beach was empty and no one had even seen him surf. Despite this, he felt a sense of accomplishment and satisfaction that he had overcome his fear and learned to surf. From that day on, Boogie Board Dan would surf every chance he got, and he finally learned to conquer his fear and limitations. Years passed and Dan became a legend on Sunless Beach. He surfed the biggest waves and was known for his fearless spirit. He would often smoke blunts before hitting the waves, saying that it helped him focus and stay calm in the water. And wherever Dan went, High Flyer was never far behind, always perched on his shoulder, watching over him and offering support. The two became an iconic duo, known for their love of the ocean, weed, and adventure. Santa Claus's story begins with him being cloned on an alien spaceship. The aliens, who were fascinated by the Earth's marijuana plant, decided to create a being who would have a deep love and understanding of the plant. They carefully selected the DNA of a guy known as Diaper Dan and used it to create Canna Claus. Canna Claus spent his early days on the spaceship learning all about the art of growing weed. He was taught how to cultivate the finest strains and create hybrid plants that would produce more potent and flavorful buds. He was given access to all the latest technology and equipment and was able to experiment with different growing techniques to perfect his skills. The alien spaceship was not just any ordinary spaceship. It was equipped with state-of-the-art technology, including advanced horticulture labs. Canna Claus was raised and trained in these labs, and it was here where he developed a deep love and appreciation for all things related to cannabis. Upon his return to Earth, Canna Claus made his way to the North Pole, a remote and secluded region known for its harsh and unforgiving environment. 
Despite the challenges, Canna Claus persevered and established himself as the North Hole's top grower of premium cannabis strains. He quickly became known for his exceptional strains, including Candy Cane, which was sought after by cannabis connoisseurs from all over the world. He was particularly fond of Candy Cane, known for its sweet minty flavor and powerful euphoric effects. But he also grew Jack Frost, which was not as well received due to its harsh and bitter taste. Determined to find a way to improve Jack Frost, Canna Claus decided to experiment with crossbreeding the two strains. The result of this endeavor was Frosted Candy, a hybrid that combined the best traits of both strains. The Frosted Candy had a unique and delicious taste, with a powerful and long-lasting high that left users feeling happy and relaxed. Canna Claus was so pleased with the results of this crossbreeding that he kept the Frosted Candy a closely guarded secret, only smoking it himself and keeping it locked away in a special room in his greenhouses. He didn't want to share this incredible strain with anyone else, but instead, he kept it for his own personal use, savoring its effects every chance he got. However, life at the North Hole was not always easy for Canna Claus. He had crackheads as his reindeer, and they were not the most reliable creatures. They were constantly high and snuck away to use crack behind Canna Claus's back. Despite the trouble they caused, Canna Claus had to whip them into shape, as they were his only means of transportation. It was on one fateful day that the crackheads would cause a catastrophic event that would change Canna Claus's life forever. As he made his way across Sunless Beach in his sleigh, loaded with presents for the world, the crackheads crashed the sleigh, scattering presents far and wide. Canna Claus was left wandering the boardwalk, searching for help to gather the presents and get back on his way. Fortunately, a local weed shop owner came to Canna Claus's aid and helped gather the presents. From that day forward, Canna Claus made it his mission to spread his love for premium cannabis to the world, and he did so by handing out blunts to all those he met, spreading joy and cheer wherever he went. And so, Canna Claus continues to spread his gift of premium cannabis, spreading joy and happiness to all those he encounters and bringing a smile to the faces of cannabis enthusiasts everywhere. Whether he is handing out blunts or growing the finest strains, Canna Claus remains committed to his mission, spreading his love for cannabis to the world.